Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we dive into the intimate and intriguing world of Sally Rooney's Normal People. Set in the modern day Ireland, this compelling narrative unveils the complex relationship between two high school sweethearts, Marianne and Connell, as they navigate the turbulent currents of young love, personal growth, and societal expectations. Rooney, an acclaimed Irish author with a master's in American literature from Trinity College, Dublin, skillfully paints a vivid picture of emotional entanglement, deftly portraying the insecurities and tenderness of first love. The book captures the reader's imagination with its relatable character development and fluid storytelling, making it a monumental hit among critics and readers alike. Normal people will draw in those who are intrigued by complex relationships and are fans of romantic dramas. If you are curious to explore one of the most talked about books of the last decade, let's delve into the stirring world of normal people, where love is anything but normal. Tune in to learn more about this exploration of young love, power dynamics, and the struggle for self-identity. Normal People, a novel. Introduction, unraveling the complexities of an evocative love tale. Sally Rooney, a master storyteller, has eloquently penned her second novel, Normal People, earning her well-deserved acclaim as the voice of a generation. This riveting tale has mesmerized an array of readers and critics who are enchanted by Rooney's profound exploration of two young adults navigating through the labyrinth of adulthood while being entwined in an intricate romantic connection. This profound narrative humanizes the universal emotions of fear and desire that characterizes the journey of normal people worldwide. In this gripping overview, we will unveil the essence of this romantic saga, dissected into three segments. After each segment, we will decode the dynamics of the relationship shared by the two protagonists. Although the narrative of the original novel artfully waltzes between the past and present, for the sake of coherence, we will unfurl this tale sequentially, commencing at the very outset. A word of caution, this narrative is punctuated with darker elements such as family abuse, suicide, and sadomasochism. For those preferring to sidestep these more harrowing details, feel free to jump to the conclusion for a concise wrap-up of this compelling novel. Part 1. Societal Divides and Self-Perception The initial dynamic between Connell and Marianne is anything but simple. Through an unlikely connection, Connell's mother being employed as a cleaner at Marianne's palatial residence, the two teenagers from the same town become a part of each other's lives. While their shared hometown of Caraclea in Ireland and their age connect them, their differences paint a stark contrast. Connell, despite being academically successful, is also popular, while Marianne, academically brilliant as well, is perceived as an outcast, often the subject of rumours. Despite societal judgment, the after-school hours Connell spends at Marianne's while his mother works kindles an unlikely friendship, and the commencement of an awkward romance in the wake of their mock exam results in January 2011. Initially, Connell is bewildered by his interest in Marianne, unable to reconcile with his attraction towards someone perceived as an object of disgust by his peers, and yet he finds himself increasingly drawn towards her. Surprisingly to Marianne, who generally assumes everyone dislikes her, a sentiment echoed even by her own family, finds Connell's attention intriguing. Fueled by an escalating attraction, Connell begins to spend more time at her house. Bonding over their shared love for books and engaging conversations, they find solace in their company, which culminates in a stolen kiss, Marianne's first, in her book-laden study. The initial thrill of their secret romance gives way to complications as their attraction deepens into a physical relationship. Their relationship becomes a comforting haven for Connell, offering him a private slice of intimacy unsullied by his friend's invasive gossip. Marianne, on the other hand, 
who has spent most of her life believing herself unlovable, finds Connell's confession of love deeply empowering and transformative, marking the true genesis of her life in her perspective. Amidst the burgeoning feelings, raw, unexplored territories in their hearts are revealed. Connell is encouraged to foster his writing, and both of them choose to follow their literary passions at Trinity College Dublin. Nevertheless, Connell struggles to merge two starkly incongruous worlds, one where he remains the popular high schooler and the other where he upholds Marianne's respect. His internal turmoil reaches its zenith before the big graduation dance, the Debs, leading him to make a heart-wrenching decision of asking another popular girl as his date, a choice that fractures his relationship with Marianne irreversibly. The irony that his secrecy about Marianne was unnecessary, it was known and accepted by his peers, does little to alleviate his guilt and regret. Marianne is hurt beyond consolation. Analysis. Our initial segment delves into the significant themes, the societal divides, self-perception, and fear of judgment that serve as important plot devices in the narrative. Connell and Marianne, despite a shared intellectual curiosity, are divided by societal class, Marianne hailing from an affluent background, while Connell's mother is hired as her housekeeper. However, the societal divide outlines an unexpected paradigm. Connell is adorned with popularity in their small town, while Marianne is stigmatized as an outcast. On closer inspection, the more potent divide seems to be their internal struggles. Connell succumbs to societal fears and perceptions, navigating trepidously around his peers' opinions about his burgeoning relationship with Marianne. On the other hand, Marianne, unconcerned by societal notions, grapples with her feelings of self-worth deeply ingrained by years of familial neglect and abuse. These internal battles define their actions and choices, shaping their relationship dynamics and its evolution as they embark on their upcoming journey to Dublin for further studies. Part 2. A Blurred Fallacy of Roles As our two characters navigate through the waters of their life at Trinity College, they hardly notice how vastly their roles have changed in stark contrast to their high school days in Carrick Lear. When Connell and Marianne cross paths at a college house party in November 2011, after months without contact, the shift is palpable. Before Connell gets a chance to interact with Marianne at the party, he meets Gareth, Marianne's boyfriend. Soon, Connell begins to internalize the twisting societal roles. He observes Marianne adorned with popularity amongst the college crowd, her social grace disarming, and her affluent background adding to her charm. Connell, contrastingly, finds himself an outsider, cognizant of his lower-class lineage, his clothes screaming his middle-class background in the midst of the upper crust. Despite past fallouts, as they converse across the party's din, the recognizable bond swiftly rematerializes. Marianne, understandably hurt by Connell's actions, mellows when he confesses his confusion and resulting guilt for his past actions. Their relationship warms, the months stretching before them filled with camaraderie. Connell weaves comfortably into Marianne's social circle, even striking a romantic connection with one of her friends. Marianne's affection towards Connell remains unabashedly evident and bubbles up during a particularly raucous party, culminating in a passionate drunken kiss. Their physical relationship blossoms, strengthened by deep dialogues, lingering gazes over dinner, and endless intellectual challenges to their knowledge. But the question that lingua around like an unwanted guest, their relationship status. When Marianne's friend Peggy flippantly questions their physical relationship, Marianne's casual affirmation and her openness about an unconventional threesome involving Peggy agitates Connell. He grapples with Marianne's strikingly submissive sexual behavior, a hollowness washing over him with the thought of her willingness to bear physical harm. Is this the Marianne he fell for? He also struggles with an unabating discomfort about his socioeconomic status in their opulent friend circle. As Connell finds himself jobless and searching for a place to live when summer looms, he yearns to suggest moving in with Marianne. His fear of rejection, his insecurities, however, 
rob him of his courage, delicately hinting at his predicament instead. Connell's subtle attempt at a proposition is lost in translation. Marianne misconstruing it for a breakup which leaves her devastated. Connell, in echoed despair, grapples with the termination of what he perceived was a shared dream of living together, convinced that Marianne would be relieved by his departure. The disconnect between their emotions and perceptions is glaring once again, reminiscent of past heartbreak. Analysis Taking a step back from the complexities of the narrative, this segment reveals a radical shift in the character's dynamics. The insecurities that once plagued Marianne now grip Connell, fueling his struggle of adjusting to an unfamiliar societal landscape at Trinity. He is at odds with his standing amongst Marianne's well-bred friends. Marianne finds herself swarmed by toxic feelings of unworthiness yet again, the fissures of past resentment for Connell resurfacing due to his inability to make their relationship public. Even after forgiving Connell for his past transgressions, Marianne regrets her acceptance of his need for secrecy. Connell's departure digs deeper into her receding self-esteem, unraveling her sense of self. The ripple effects of these internal battles are yet to be explored in the concluding sections. Part 3. The Dance of Pain and Healing Dive into the time-lapse of September 2012. Picture Marianne gracing her usual meeting place with Connell for coffee, feeling the distance in her unfamiliar, somewhat unnerving aura. Peering into her darkened eyes, her ashy lips, She starts a conversation he wasn't prepared for, stirring a wave of uneasiness. Marianne has a boyfriend, Jamie, and she's into violent sex. He is stunned, grappling with the stark revelation. Does Marianne enjoy her punishing trysts, Connell wonders. She seems to avoid his question, deflecting instead to her concept of self-deserving anguish. With Jamie, she's able to simulate, fabricate, an intimate power dynamic she once experienced with Connell. Instantly, Connell starts disliking Jamie, a sentiment Jamie evidently reciprocates. The tension drips into an altercation during a group trip in Italy. Jamie broadsides Marianne with insults and accusations, with Connell intervening as the peacekeeper. Later on, Marianne bears her soul to Connell, her brother, Alan, seeking comfort in hurling cruel words and, occasionally, fits of physical abuse, all under the stoic observation of their mother. She felt she must have deserved it. Marianne admits her fear of revealing her past to Connell, scared of his potential judgment. Connell is left to grapple with his guilt, morphing into a kind of self-pity. An apology is all he can muster. Fast forward to July 2013. Connell has a girlfriend, Helen, who's a medical student at Trinity. Connell relishes their relationship, a beacon of normalcy in the storm of his life. However, he soon finds his peace disrupted by Helen's discomfort around Marianne. Coincidentally, discovering his childhood friend, Rob, has tragically taken his own life, causes Connell and Helen's relationship to end, with Helen seeing his true sentiments towards Marianne at the funeral. Connell and Marianne receive scholarships in 2013. Connell is suddenly relieved from his financial burden, and Marianne imports herself to Sweden. The significance of the separation is diluted as Connell engrosses himself in composing his daily love letters to Marianne. Marianne, functioning in a sketchy relationship with a physically abusive photographer in Sweden, compares starkly to Connell in Dublin. Post his breakup and Rob's funeral, he descends into depression, haunted by a disturbing connection to Rob's insecurities. Marianne's influence becomes crystal clear. Her action of prompting his application to Trinity swerves him from a path eerily similar to Rob's. Summer 2014 rolls in with Marianne visiting her childhood home after a long absence. Connell, living and working in Dublin, finds time each weekend to visit her. Long drives and heart-to-heart conversations become a routine, which culminates in mutual love confessions to the soundtrack of their high school days. They seal their moment with a euphoric kiss. However, their tranquility is quickly disrupted when Marianne asks him to hurt her during a steamy moment. 
causing her to leave upon his refusal. Marianne bathes in self-degradation, interpreting Connell's rejection as proof of her corrupt nature. Arriving home, she is greeted by her abusive brother, Alan, whose violent behavior results in her nose bleeding. Cue Connell on the phone, her rescue beacon. He drives over, and in a character-defining moment, threatens Alan of dire consequences upon repeating his abusive acts. Together, they drive away from her tumultuous home. Marianne and Connell's relationship evolves into an understanding cohabitation in Dublin in seven months. They strike a compromise on satisfying their sexual preferences without physically aggressive undertones. Marianne flourishes under the confident glow of Connell's love. But the question that oscillates in the stillness, will their love endure the tides of change? February 2015 throws in a challenge. Connell gets accepted into an MFA program in New York City. Marianne encourages him to walk the path of growth, braving the imminent separation. Regardless of uncertainty, what prevails is their transformations and the inevitable empathy and perspective they garnered from each other. Speaking words of assurance, she sends Connell on his journey, their future hugs the shadows of the unknown. Final Summary Our tale unfolds on the familiar turf of secondary school, where two starkly different individuals cross paths under the most ordinary of circumstances. Welcome Connell, the socially adored athletic prodigy, and Marianne, the quiet intellectual ticking away at life's periphery. Their destinies entwine when Connell's mother secures a job as a maiden in Marianne's aristocratic household. Out of prying eyes, they bond, an innocent flower flourishing in a covert garden, cemented by a shared captivation of literature, segueing into a clandestine amorous demeanor. However, unspoken misunderstandings pose as villains in their tender tale. Connell cowers under societal pressure, inviting another girl to the coveted school dance, leading to Marianne's dismantled trust. Imagine the wheel of life spinning, leading them into the hallowed halls of university. In an ironic twist of fortune, Marianne becomes the darling among the elitist circles, whereas Connell wobbles on unsteady grounds, grasping at straws of his crumbling social stature. An odd dance ensues, circling each other, their magnetic polarity propelling them into a commitment-phobic rhythm. Their emotional teetering instigates an array of temporary flings, yet in the grand scheme, their connections ebb away insignificantly when compared to the profound chord struck with the other. Away from Connell, Marianne treads down the twisted alley of abuse-ridden affairs, coercing her already fragile psyche into a quagmire of perceived unworthiness. However, the cloud of self-deprecation dissolves when Connell boldly exposes her tormenting bonds, silhouetting himself as her warrior of love and devotion. An emotional trade of self-realization ensues. Marianne seeds the inspiration of a fulfilling writer's life in Connell, while he reciprocates by sprinkling radiant seeds of wholesomeness and joy in her barren life. Underneath the moonlit sky, their future together hangs like a question mark. Yet, they find solace in their shared knowledge of their unforgettable imprints on each other's souls. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.